way, welcome to On The Bookshelf. Now, Musi, I am hanging out with digital content creator, entrepreneur, and she is the owner, hold on, I must get this right, of Anino <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> I had to make sure, I had to make sure. Welcome to On The Bookshelf, thank, thank you for joining you. me. Thank you, every time we sing together, it just feels like a, a continuation. Uh, also, we're twins, right? We, we're born on the same day, yeah, you should we, know we, this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first things first, what does reading mean to you? What do you read? Why do I read? Sure, T.D. Jake said, if you don't read, you cannot lead. Mm. And wow. I took that and I ran with it. But I think my parents introduced reading very early. My mom started reading books, I think, when I was even in her belly. Mm. And I just grew up around books. My parents, my grandparents are readers. And honestly, they're life-changing. What would you say the importance of reading is for entrepreneurs in particular? Because sometimes, yeah. you know, you walk into this business world and you're like, I just need to do the business. Yeah. I don't need to be here reading a book. Forget that, I don't even yeah. have time yeah. to be here. Yeah, I think it's really important because if you're watching stuff, I feel like the, com the, the information is compiled for you. But when it's a book, it's 300 pages that you have to sit through and actually sift for what you need. I feel mm. like where there's effort, it's normally backed up. So books come with a whole lot of information. It's normally people's experiences. And as much as, and we spoke about this, that books are really spiritual. They come yes. at a really, really good times when, when you need them. So you might not use it now, but then when you face with a situation, I feel like you can always think of, oh, that book. I picked up that. on yeah, this page. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's get into the books that have shaped you as a businesswoman. Yeah. Which one? The first one's not here. Um, it's so by T.D. Jakes. And that I book... I love so changed my geez. life. I picked up that book when I was doing house calls. I used to do people's nails. I used to go to their houses. And then I was ready to transition and grow my business. And he it's launched that... main story. Right? The Wright <laughs> Brothers, actually. Yes. And he, the way he wrote about the Wright Brothers and used that airplane as a metaphor and uses an eagle as a metaphor is what I needed um, for that kick and that push to say okay your business you've already started but now it's time to elevate it's time to build now and one good example that also helped me scale my business to a certain extent is that he said his dad had a clean a janitor business but his dad never knew when to put down the mop Wow. And I always thought about that in my business, that at some point I need to put down the mop, I need to put down the nail fire, I need to stop doing the actual nails mm. and be the one who runs the business. So that's what that book actually did for me. And I think the thing about Saw is that a lot of people would think T.D. Jakes and yeah. think it's just spiritual, but Not actually, even. it's actually a very entrepreneurship book. Extremely, extremely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a business book, it's a practical book, it's got your day-to-day steps but also it's got that spiritual aspect as well to back it up because i do think i mean the foundation of all things is mm. you know but um yeah it's very practical and it's for it's for everybody it's universal in fact okay staying on a spiritual note let's go to marianne wills williamson yeah a return to love <laughs> uh williamson <laughs> got that out i've got this one as well a different edition okay but it's not a book that you'd also think Entrepreneurship, business. Why, My husband why looked at me and he's like, uh, Kanti, where are you going? <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> this book changed my relationship with people. And if you don't have people, you don't have a business. That's it. And it changed the way I looked at people. It changed the way I react to people. And it gave me empathy. Mm. empathy for people. So when I look at my staff members, I don't just look at people who are coming to, to make sure that my clients are, 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 are happy, but it's people who have a story, people who've been through things, and people who are going, who are trying to go somewhere. And at the end of the day, all we want is to be loved mm. and to be accepted. And so the way that I've treated my people, the pe my team, based on this book, has elevated my business, not just relationally, but financially too. Because if people are happy, they bring the right energies, they bring their best selves, and it multiplies. This is why you're flying, girl. I am. Yeah, it's in the people. <laughs> All in the people. Yeah. Your last book is undoubtedly one of those books that is on every bestsellers yes. list. It is one of those books you and I have spoken about. Yes. But I've never read, I still have not read it, <laughs> The 5 a.m. Club. This book found me in the pits. So I was moving um, my business to a bigger, bigger premises, and for the first time I got shop fitters, because the first one I did the shop fitting myself, like I was putting pieces together. So I got, <laughs> we are Mr. Price Home, girl. <laughs> Mr. Price Home, girl, deco fitting. Like, listen, I was just picking. Um, and then we were moving, and then it was supposed to be the launch. 
I was still a bit a little crazy, uh, crazy, and I could see that, you know what, this thing is not gonna happen today. Like, my launch is not gonna happen. These people are not gonna fit in. But for some reason, I had crazy faith. In fact, it was just insanity. Mm. And I could see it's not gonna happen. And I invited Sibu Mabena to come and speak. And the night didn't happen because there was still construction when the event was supposed to start and my guests were and arriving. Had no shop. And I had no shop. But Sibu Mabena bought me this book mm. as a gift. And I took a week off to just deal with the emotion of the disappointment and the embarrassment of what had happened. And I started reading this book. And two years later, I realized why that event happened. Because I didn't understand. I was like, why would I go through so much? I could have just said, okay, let's add another week. Mm. But the purpose was for me to get that book at that time. Now back to the book. The book taught me um, discipline. Mm -hmm. The book taught me the importance of looking at things holistically. We can't just look at businesses as this financial thing, but it's it's holistic. Is it satisfying? Not, before we even get there, is it serving people? Is there a bigger purpose behind why the business is there? Um, is it satisfying? Does it get all the right energy, all the love from you? And also, are you well as a person? Mm. And that's why these books are together, because this one speaks on love, not just about other people, but myself. Yeah. I have to have self-love so that I can have love for people, so that they, I can have love for my business, and so and, and so on. on and so yes. on and so forth. So yeah. 5 a.m. taught me, firstly, waking up early in the morning is the most precious time you can ever have. The stillness oh, of a new my. day. Stillness of a new day, your thoughts are clear. You, I believe it's the time you have the most energy, popu uh, like contrary to popular, popular belief. belief. <laughs> You've got the most energy. And I, I began having a routine. I actually started writing down things that have actually come to pass. I keep my journals and I go back to when I started reading this book. And those things have come to pass because there was just so much intention back. I wasn't trying to look at my phone, looking at emails, but I'm trying to write my goals down. There was intention backed in writing down my goals. Waking up in the morning, um, journaling, meditating, being still, going to exercise, taking care of the, my physical being so that I can be um, healthy and energetic for my actual business. And more than anything, um, he talks about, um, he uses two people. One is an artist who's not making it because they talented, but there's no structure behind anything. There's no planning. And then the one is, a, is an overworked lady who's successful, but she's burning out. Mm. So we could be on either, either side. side. And so often we are either exactly, one or the other. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And throughout the book, he teaches to just find that balance. balance. Yeah. The balance that everybody says is so elusive, but yeah. it actually is attainable and it should be the center of all our goals. Absolutely. Because you can't be all things to all people. No. And that includes your business. Fumi, thank you so much for your time. Um, I wish you the greatest success. Yes. And I know it's going to be built on such a strong foundation. Yeah. And my wish for you is that we see Anino countrywide, continent-wide, worldwide. It's happening. It's happening. She said it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs>